Hola amigos. Me amo es pie. Do I have to what? Just do it, Fifi. What's up, everybody? My name is Pi. And I'm Joe. And welcome to Gear Talk with SLR Lounge. You're on the SR Lounge YouTube channel, but we also have a fantastic website at srlounge.com. Now, what are we talking about today, Joe? Today we are talking about Sigma and their new line of lenses because they have such a fantastic art line as well as a sports line. Sigma's been like doing some crazy stuff. They've been making waves when it comes to lenses. It's actually pretty incredible. They're doing some really cool things on the imaging side too. But I want to talk today about their lenses, uh, mainly because we've had a chance now to shoot quite a bit on the sport lens, that 120 to 300, the 50, the 35, and these lenses are incredible. And I wanted to focus a gear talk on this because it merits discussing. Absolutely. So I met with uh, one of the Sigma people last year at WPBI and I asked him like, what was the change basically in the last few years? Because five years ago, Sigma was not really, I mean, I kind of grouped Sigma and Tamron in that same grouping where, yes, they have less expensive lenses, but you do pay for it in, mm -hmm. in terms of quality, functionality and everything. It just, they just weren't as nice as the signature lenses from Canon, Sony, Zeiss, uh, Nikon, all those lenses. So, I, when I asked him that, he said basically the management changed. I think the, he said that actually they had a new president or something like that, and, mm -hmm. this, uh, and the president's son stepped up or something. And he said basically the new focus for the entire company was quality. That they wanted to compete on cost still, but it was just quality. They wanted to make superior lenses. And this isn't supposed to sound like a sales pitch, but that's what they've essentially done. They've not only competed on price, but they've created lenses that are as good, if not better in many ways, than a lot of the signature lenses from Canon, Nikon, and so forth. Yeah, that is absolutely true. And I think they all surprised us when they came out with their first art lens, which I think was the 18 to 35, and that was a 1.8 constant aperture. And that surprised everyone because yeah. a zoom lens with an aperture less than 2.8 is unheard of. Well, and then there's the the rumored 2470, right? That's gonna yeah, be- Yeah, the 24 to 70 F2 is it F2? full frame. I think it's F2. That's an interesting rumor. That, I mean, I would, buy that as soon as it came out. If that yeah. was out right now, I would have that lens. Yeah. Um, absolutely it, incredible what they're doing. What were we gonna say? Well, their art lenses have set almost a new par for third party lenses where you're not compromising cost and image quality anymore. Yeah. You're getting a great lens at a low price and yeah. it's fantastic. Like we can only wait for more art lenses before I feel like they're setting a new par for, or a new bar, new par, we're not playing golf. <laughs> a new bar for not only third party, but I mean like actual signature Canon and Nikon lenses as well. I mean, mm -hmm. these lenses, it seems like they're coming out with each lens at their target cost is around 50% of, Absolutely. 50 to 60% of the signature lens of its equivalent. Yeah. So the 35 here is like what, 800 bucks? It's a, yeah, this this 35 is I think 799 on BH. And this is like 800 and 900 bucks for the 50. Yeah, but then the Canon equivalent, the Canon 35 is 1500 and their 50 millimeter is 1550. Yeah, so that's crazy. You're coming in at like 60% roughly of, don't do my math, I don't, I'm, this is why I do photography now because when I did accounting, it wasn't good for anybody. Mm -hmm. But it, mm -hmm, like <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I do agree. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's absolutely crazy because on a quality standpoint, these are fantastic. I mean, shooting wide open on these, sharp images, it's, it's incredible what they've done with the uh, chromatic aberration mitigation. Um, I mean, edge to edge, they're fantastic. They have beautiful color, beautiful contrast. Yeah. I love these lenses. I, I would say this, if you already own signature Canon 50 or signature Nikon 50, well actually if the Nikon 50, I probably would upgrade. Um, because their Nikkor, I think, is limited to 1.4 anyway, but the mm -hmm. Canon goes down to 1.2. But if you, if I had the signature, I, I do already have the Canon 50, I probably wouldn't necessarily go out and buy this just to replace it. Yeah. But if I didn't own this lens, the, the Canon 50 version, I think I would just jump to the 50 Sigma mm -hmm. and just stick with it. And if I needed a 35, I actually don't shoot with a 35 that much. We did um, some recent shots out in the desert. That was really fun. Yeah. Uh, and I actually used the 35 for portraits for kind of this fashion kind of look to these images. It was really cool because it, it gives you distortion to kind of play with. Uh, and it's something that I found pretty fun actually yeah. in using it in photos. But that was the first time I really used that focal length and I, I absolutely loved it. It was fantastic. So if I didn't have the signature version, I would probably jump in on the Sigmas just yeah. and just not even worry about it. 
it's almost it's really cool though because if you want a lens better than the sigma 50 you almost have to jump to the zeiss otis and that's what we have here four times as much yeah this is the 85 yeah but their 55 millimeter 1.4 comes in around four thousand dollars which is more than four times as much as the sigma 50 costs yeah and to get better image quality that's how much you have to spend and you're not getting four times better image quality you're getting just a small a small yeah. improvement on there i was like a mid-sentence burp that was <laughs> awesome so anyways so with the, the Zeiss too, like you mentioned with the cost, um, and then also Zeiss don't have autofocus. Yeah, that's right? a huge, kind of a big deal. Well, you get a trade off too, because with the Sigma 50, you don't get as much of a focus throw, but with the Zeiss, mm -hmm. I think the throw is like 280 degrees, it might be more. It's, you get a really nice, for video, it's much nicer. Yeah, well the, the Otis are incredible, and they're actually like the, they are the bar setters, you yeah. know, the, the Zeiss Otis lens lineup. But the cool thing is, is that that is the bar that Sigma's aiming for. And that's what they confirmed. Like every lens that we're designing, we're competing for Zeiss status. Yeah. Which means that they're generally exceeding Canon and Nikon lens quality and mm -hmm. so forth with theirs. So those have been fantastic. I would definitely look into those if you guys are looking for, uh, you know, great prime lenses that are at a really nice price point, sub $1,000, amazing professional image quality, great autofocus, great on every level. You're going to absolutely not be disappointed. Now, the monster. Yes, this is the Sigma 120 to 300. And we get a lot of questions about this, especially from sports or maybe bird photographers that are kind of, you know, looking for a, a nice lens but don't want to spend more than $4,000. This is probably the perfect lens for you because it comes in around 3,500. You get the range of 300 millimeters and you get the low aperture of 2.8. Yeah, it's a 120 to 300 at a fixed f2.8. Yeah. Kind of ridiculous. It is actually. kind of ridiculous. But you've actually used this lens for portrait work, and we yeah. also have uh, Justin who's used it on a safari, and all around, like it's been a fantastic performer. Oh, it's been amazing. And we're going to show some images from the, the desert shoot and everything uh, as we're talking, but out in the desert, it was amazing. I mean, the only complaint that I could say about this lens is just the weight. Yeah, it, it, it is heavy. It weighs a lot. When you combine it with the camera, what was the combined weight with the lens and the camera? I think it's about 15 pounds. 15 pounds. Yeah. It's really difficult to hold up for any period of time with your left hand or with your off camera mm -hmm. hand, basically. And so it kind of makes it like at, at one point I was just like, get me a monopod. I need to yep. get a monopod because it's, it's just a little bit too heavy to be hand holding. Mm -hmm. And I think Justin had a similar experience when he was out in a safari. He's just like, it was big. Yep. But when we talk about the price point of this, under $4,000, that sounds like a ridiculous amount, right? Yep. $3,500, $3,600 to buy this lens. But the Canon 300 millimeter f2.8 prime is i think about six thousand dollars over is it it's yeah. like 65 or 66 hundred dollars so when you compare that yeah. you're like holy crap dude i get a a varying focal length lens mm -hmm. uh same fixed aperture and again almost like 50 to 60 percent of the cost of the signature lens yeah um but as far as image quality what did you feel like? with that being said i think compared to the 300 2.8 it's hard to compare um, image quality when you get a, a focal or a, uh, a varying focal length. Yeah, a varying focal length versus a prime lens because the 300, the Canon 300 will win. That's. But by how much? Yeah, that's the question. Exactly. I don't think you would notice a difference if. Uh, I mean, like, I don't. I think that difference is negligible when you consider the price. I think it's super negligible. Yeah. And I, I shot on a 300 uh, during when we did that whole Canon Lens War mm -hmm. series. It's a fantastic lens. But, I mean, the images I was getting out of this if I'm not comparing them side by side, zooming in at 100%, it's completely negligible. And if I am comparing side by side, zooming in at 100%, mm -hmm. it still doesn't justify paying double the price yeah. and losing the varying you know, focal length. So it's absolutely fantastic from that standpoint. It's, it's totally groundbreaking. I love what they've done with that lens. And I think the quality, if you're looking for a long telephoto with a fixed aperture, this is the one to get. Just work your left arm yeah, a little bit exactly. or your right arm you know but what's interesting about that is this setup weighs about four times more as the canon 7200 but with the image stabilization so i was taking these test shots at about um i think one tenth or one fifth of a second mm -hmm. and three out of ten i could keep from the uh the 7200 but three out of ten i could also keep from the 120 to 300 handheld yeah and so it is heavy but there is a fantastic image stabilization that comes with this lens yeah it was really nice actually i noticed that on my shoot too because mm -hmm. for the first 
while I was shooting at one two hundredth of a second, uh, which for that focal length, because I was zoomed in at 300 millimeters, is really not enough. You need to be at 300 millimeters, your reciprocal rule of thumb is that you're at at least one three hundredth of a second or yeah. one four hundredth of a second, whatever you can get to. But I noticed that the images were still plenty sharp. They, yeah. they didn't look like there was any camera shake whatsoever. The, the stabilization is absolutely fantastic yeah. in the lens. I noticed it also helped me compose a lot better. Just because it stayed still in my viewfinder, I was able to get the shots and compose and your very easily. arms are a little bigger yeah. now. So you get a workout and you get fantastic images. All in one lens for half the price. Exactly. I don't know. Kind of a no-brainer. I think with that being said, I think um, there's a saying that photographers like to use, with, which is, you get what you pay for. And that is true most of the case. But I think with this new lineup of Sigma lenses, you actually get more than what yeah. you pay for. In fact, the, the build quality, I was going to mention the build quality on these 250s. I mean, it's significantly different. Yeah, uh, it's fantastic. This is weightier, all metal construction. You can feel like mm -hmm. the tightness in the rings yeah. and, and everything about it feels like a better put together lens than the Canon. I mean, you can see like how loose the elements are even when I just kind of shake it in comparison. Yeah. And that um, goes along the board. It doesn't matter if you're buying a $800 lens or a $3,500 lens, the build quality is fantastic on all of them. Yeah, it's been amazing. So I think this is one of those cases where it's not a matter of you get what you pay for because in this case you're getting as good of a lens. I think this is just, they're setting the bar and they're dropping that bar. Well, they're raising the bar and dropping the price basically. Yeah. So anyway, Kudos go out to Sigma for this because uh, absolutely incredible lenses. We love them all. And well, it's a serious contender. If you guys are looking for new primes, if you guys are looking for zoom lenses, look to the latest lineup of Sigma lenses. And I'm really excited about the new 2470 and also the 85 that's gonna be competing yes, with this nice. guy. That's gonna be the lens to look at because uh, we still need two more 85s in the studio and I'm hoping that those are gonna be the ones. Yeah. So anyway. Hope you all enjoyed this episode of Gear Talk. For more links and more information, be sure to check out the actual article on SR Lounge. You can click below in the description. It'll take you over to SR Lounge where you can get links to all the products that we've mentioned here. And also, if you like our videos, well, what do we want them to do? Click subscribe. Click subscribe, like them, share them with your friends. All of the above will yeah. help us out tremendously. <laughs> we'll see you out. Dang it. <laughs> so close. <laughs> We'll see you all in the next episode. Do you want me to put the sign? On yes, please. So Jonathan! <laughs> you, you frightened him. Thank you. <laughs> this is why he has stress issues. Can you unbutton your shirt too? <laughs> There's a shirt underneath it though. Dang it. I don't know what to do with my hands with it. Perfect. Perfect amount of chest hair. How's my nose hair? <laughs> it's good. Unfortunately, it's a bit lacking, actually. Uh -huh. Can I button my shirt up now? Yes, please.